Hello everyone, welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip. Uh, Brett Kelly here, and uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, offline package repositories. So, uh, for those who don't know what I am getting at right there, is like, whether you've got a server, a desktop, or whatever, and you do updates, where do those packages come from? Well, they come from the internet. They come from someone else's server. They come from Microsoft, comes from, I don't know, uh, RHEL, Rocky, whoever's maintaining the operating system, that's where they put their packages. But you, the end user, you get that through your internet connection. So, uh, what happens if you don't want that to happen? What happens if you don't a like you don't have a stable internet connection? Maybe you uh, are using this in a security-minded environment, and you're you're air-gapped. You you have no connection to an outside network. It's just the the internal LAN. Um, how are you going to get packages? How are you going to update? How are you going to do anything? Right. Well, you can create offline repositories. Um, you can um, sync down packages from the uh, the source and store them locally, whether it's on your server or another little web server on your LAN, and uh, yeah, to solve any of those problems. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna just make an offline repo. I'm gonna show you how to do this first with Rocky Linux, and if uh, uh, that, this will hold for any RHEL base, if you're Alma, CentOS, RHEL, whatever, um, but I'm gonna do it on Rocky. And uh, if, if, if everyone's interested enough and you find this helpful, uh, we can do it in Ubuntu too, we use Apply, but um, yeah, why don't we uh, jump over to the screen here and we'll do a quick little uh, crash course on how to create your own offline or package repository. Okay, everyone, we're uh, looking at a very blank screen right now. Um, yeah, so I'm remoted into a Rocky Linux machine um, and uh, we're going to create some offline repos. So, little, uh, little disclaimer for this video. I'm not doing all the main package repos. Otherwise, we'd be here for hours, and uh, well, no one wants to be here for hours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the 45 drives repo, and uh, we'll do the ZFS repo. Those are relatively small, but the point is, as we go through this, as long as you have the repositories enabled that you want synced, the big sync command I'm gonna run later will just grab anything from the enabled repos. So keep that in mind. Anyway, with that said, let's get started. So uh, let's look at what's currently enabled. So we have, DNF repo list. That tells us we have app stream, base OS, and extras, which is really the bare minimum you need for a minimal install. I'm gonna end up disabling all these. But first, I'm going to turn on 45 drives as repos. So I'm gonna copy that to clipboard, I'm gonna paste that, and run. Uh, with that, I'm going to get ZFS on Linux as well too. Oh, and I didn't mean to open that new, new tab, so I'm going to try that again. I have fat fingers. I mistype all the time. Okay, there we go. Rel based distro. We're going to grab this release package here, and I'm going to go DNF, install, and install that one as well. So remember, this is just illustrative. The point here is, if you want a repo synced offline, make sure it's enabled, and you'll get all the packages from it. So this won't take too much longer. Okay, yes. I'm gonna clear it again. We'll run DNF repo list. So yeah, now we have the 45 drives repo, the three repos we started with, the official Rocky ones, and ZFS. So what I'm gonna actually do here is I'm gonna go DNF config manager set disabled app stream. Base OS and extras. So right now we only have 45 stable and ZFS. So that's exactly what I want. Great for illustrative purposes. So what do we do now? You may be wondering. Um, we're going to first create a directory where these packages will live. So I'll say uh, Actually, yeah, what am I doing? I'll just make it where I am. Why do I have to make this complicated? Make their repos. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go DNF, repo sync, dash dash delete, 
I'll, I'm going to write out the whole command and then I'll talk through you what it, what uh, what I'm actually doing here. Um, repos and I'm going to go repo ID equals um, and so the repo ID would be one of the ones that you want to sync. So we want 45 drive stable synced. Um, newest only and download metadata. Okay, so DNF repo sync. So it pretty, that's a very descriptive title. It syncs that repo local here. It syncs that to this directory that you give it. This delete flag tells it if there's anything that's been removed from the main repos that is currently in the repo here, delete it. So a true sync. Repo ID is the repo you want to um, actually sync down. So you might be saying, well, Brett, why the heck did you disable the ones you don't want anymore if you can just specify the one you do want? Well, a very convenient way to do would to wrap this thing in a little for loop that just loops through the active repos. That's what I'd recommend doing. Um, but for illustrative purposes, this will work. Uh, newest only, only grab the newest packages. Don't pull every old package down. And download metadata. This one's very important. This pulls down the repo metadata at the same time, meaning that you don't have to do the extra steps of creating um, the repo metadata file to make, or to make these packages usable again. You really are just giving a full, give me everything in that repo and put it on this system for me. Um, for whatever reason, if you just want the packages, just take that last flag out. Anyway, let's run it. So it'll go through, it'll grab, and it'll start pulling all the files down. So there's not too much in the repos and they're all relatively small files, so it shouldn't take too long here. Cool, done. So if I look in repos, there's 45 drive stable, which is, and then that file tree looks very familiar, which if I go back to here, able, it matches exactly what's in here. So we've got a full copy of this repo. Let's do it with ZFS too, why not? What's ZFS's name? Well, I'm just gonna guess, hopefully it's just ZFS. Good, I got it right. Same thing with this guy, it's relatively small. Again, so when you're doing this for real and you want the full file packages, uh, the full operating system packages, this process will take a while. Uh, the Rocky Minimal, everything included, and you'll probably want the Apple repository as well to get all those extra bits, will total about 24 gigabytes in size. Um, uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, you may be wondering, okay, that's great, man, but what happens when I need new packages? Well, what's, what happens if I run the thing again? Is it gonna download everything? No, it's gonna take a look in the repo, and then it's just gonna skip everything because it's already got it. If a new package was updated into that repository by us or if from one of your other repositories you have, it'll just grab that one, update the metadata. It truly is just a nice sync command. So uh, I'll kind of leave that to the viewer on how they want. Maybe you want to do a cron job that does that, maybe whatever. Um, at this point, how do you actually use these files? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay. The files are here, right? So uh, let's actually make them useful. So let's go into etsy yum.repos.d and see 45 drives repo in there. So let's, uh, let's just um, let's get rid of that. We don't need it anymore because we don't want to go to the internet that way. But I do want to create a 45 drives local.repo. And what do I put in this file? Well, I give it the name of the repo. Oh my, the fat fingers are bad today. Um, stable local. We want this thing enabled. We want um, the priority equal to one in this case. GPG check equal to one. Uh, that's going to cause a little bit of a thing in a minute. GPG check equals one. So we're going to check the, the repo GPG as well as the package key. Make sure that's all right. And then here's the actual magic part. The um, 
Typically, you would put an HTTP address here, and then you'd point it to the URL of where all these packages live. That's the traditional way. But we've downloaded all these, and they are local on the file system. So you actually use this notation. So it'll know to go look in the directory that we have just synced all those files down to. Remember, we left that create metadata flag there, so everything's literally ready to go, as long as we tell this repo file to go look at it. The next thing we have to do is tell it where to find the GPG key, because all these um, um, packages are signed because, well, you want to make sure they're coming from the right place. Uh, you're going to need the key, otherwise, yum, we'll go, nope, don't trust this. RPG key, dead 45 drives. So as I'm typing this out, someone might be noticing at home being like, dude, you forgot a step, but we'll get there. Okay, so that's our repo file. I'm happy with this, this is good, but we're gonna have to remember this, this, this location. WQ. We need to create that repo file. So let's go into Etsy, PKI, RPM, GPG, and I want to pull down the 45 drives key, which is key right here. So remember, Pulling the package down doesn't actually pull the GPG keys as well too. You're gonna to need to grab that as well. If you don't care about GPG keys in your repo file, just set GPG check to zero. But remember, you might not, you can't guarantee you're getting the, the correct signed package, whatever. So I'm just gonna pull this file down. Oh, again, you have to type the commands right though, buddy. Okay, that's cool. But again, you might be noticing, I have to rename this thing. So we're gonna just move GPG AC to, um, Oh man, memory's gone today too. Okay, rpm-gpg-key-45drives. Um, cool, so that's there. So what that means, and let me go take a look at this file again. Pack it knows where to look for the packages, and now it knows where to look for the GPG key, so it can check that the packages are signed by this key. Everything's hunky-dory. Um, so let's test to see if it all actually worked. All right, so to make sure this thing actually works, I've hopped open to my uh, like console into it before I was SSH'd in, but what we're gonna actually do is turn the network off completely. So this will kind of, well, a brute force way of simulating no internet connection, There's no network connection at all. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, I'm going to first disable the ZFS repo because I didn't make a local file for that. And uh, set disabled. So we just want to leave it out for now because we're just looking at the 45 drive stuff, right? So what we're going to do now is then go DNF install, uh, and we'll pick a 45 drives package out of the uh, out of the repo. So 45 drives tools. So I'm going to hit install here. So the first thing we're going to see is it wants to import the uh, GPG key we gave it, and you'll notice the from. This is the local place we put it. Typically, it will try to go to the network to grab that. So good. That's a good sign that we're working here. So we say, yep, ah, and immediately the package fails. Why does this package fail? Because it's looking for some other, other packages that aren't in the 45 drives repo that will be in the main Rocky repos. But because in this video, I didn't create a local account for, or uh, sorry, a local copy of everything, because, well, it just really would have taken too long, um, it's mad and can't satisfy itself for all the, uh, all the package dependencies. But that's kind of out of my laziness, not out of it not working. So I'm just going to do a skip broken for a second because I just want to try to show something. Um, no, and it's going to get mad at us. Um, so we're going to do something different here in this tech tip. I'm going to, I'm going to leave everyone with a homework assignment. <laughs> um, if you want to see exactly what, that, what, what, what YUM looks like or DNF looks like when you go to pull that file down, the reason we couldn't do this here is because out of my laziness and haste and, well, just giving you guys the... Um, luxury of not having to watch hours of packages download. Um, I guess we could have edited it, but whatever, go with it. Um, why don't you try this out? Make yourself an offline repo for Rocky Linux, but uh, make sure to get the base OS app stream and extras as well. Follow that same process we did. And so I hope you liked that video. Um, hope you liked the assignment. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and if you're interested, 
The process is pretty similar for Ubuntu too, but we use a tool called Apply instead of just using nice DNF here. Um, and we can showcase that as well. But uh, when, why don't we let the users decide what they want to see next? Maybe you guys want to see me actually pull all the repos down and show what you look like. Maybe you want to see Ubuntu. Either way, we'll let you decide. So, catch you another time.